हे व्हाट्सअप गाईज दिस इज सोहन अँड यू आर वॉचिंग युअर टेक्निकल स्पार्क चॅनल फ्रेंड्स इन फोर्स पॉईंट डी एल पी सिरीज सो फार वी हॅव लर्न व्हॉट इज फोर्स पॉईंट मॅनेजमेंट सर्व्हर ॲज वेल ॲज फोर्स पॉईंट डी एल पी राईट अँड इन प्रिवियस व्हिडिओ वी हॅव सीन आर्किटेक्चर दॅट हॅव एक्झॅक्टली फोर्स पॉईंट डी एल पी इज प्लेस्ड इन द एन्व्हायरमेंट अँड व्हॉट आर द कम्पोनंट्स ऑर सर्व्हर्स इट कॅन बी इंटिग्रेटेड विथ अँड इन दिस व्हिडिओ वी विल बी लर्निंग व्हॉट इज फोर्स पॉईंट डी एल पी प्रिजिट so that before you start with the installation of forcepoint dlp you will have complete idea of your components as well as the infra so without further ado let's get started after this small intro video hey welcome back guys friends before i start with the, you know explaining the prerequisite uh, i personally works in a different way because very first i choose what is the product life cycle put software version which i am going to install in my environment when exactly those are getting expired so accordingly i'll be able to manage those things in a better way because once i choose the you know the appropriate version then in the next step i'm going to check what are the known issues those are identified into the that version or in a next version so let me show show you that how exactly i personally plan my deployment so let me check out what is the force point dlp version so i know the version so what i'll do i'll simply search here dlp discover is no yeah dlp endpoint right so this is the version we are going to install in our environment so the latest version is 10.2 and it's released on 22 feb 2024 okay and the support uh, or you can say maintenance support is going to be expired on 31st august 2025 which means if any issue occurred in this particular version okay 10.2 then they are not going to release any bug or fixes okay and if you are encountering any major issue then you will have to go to the latest version which is available after august 31st okay and the support for this particular version will get expired on 31st august 2026 which means if you check out properly then one version life cycle is almost two and a half year for force point dlp version right so hopefully the first thing is clear so in this scenario what i'm going to do i'm going to plan my deployment for this particular version 10.2 now let's go to the next page and here we'll see the release notes so guys here is my 10.2.0 release note let's expand this and as you could see here under first point dlp no release notes i am going with the 10.2 so if you have any questions or you know if you want to you if you are just curious about this you, you you can just simply go through with this all the options which is available like what's new in this particular version right as well as you know the installation or upgradation uh, process like this so for this i have personally already gone through all the things which is required for me or applicable for me based on my environment or my customer environment but i'll really recommend if you are using any existing version or prodding for the new fresh installation then always go through with this and if you suspect anything okay which is not uh, correct or wrong then what you can do you can simply go back and check the previous versions you can also check out the a resolve issue okay in this version and the open issues so friends since we are installing postman dlp for the very first time so let me go to the operating systems and hardware requirement and simply click on this deployment installation center it will open into the new tab and here we'll have to go to the deployment and installation center and need to choose system requirement for this version so let's click on that so that we will get to know how much resources we required like in terms of your cpu memory hard disk as well as operating systems okay now this particular article is applies to the version which we are planning to install version 10.2 this is also you know the high level topics if you want you can just go through with this particular things which is covered in this article now since i am go going with the dlp version 10.2 you can check out which are the force point web and email security appliances which is supported with this version so 8.5.5 8.5.5 what if you are running our dlp version our uh, version below the 9.0 then the previous or you can say older version of web and email security appliances are supported you cannot go with the 8.5 when you are running 8.7.1 dlp version okay now let me just scroll down more this is just a high level information 
so i'm not going to read everything okay and guys uh, during the architecture explanation i told you right uh, forcepan dlp does support your microsoft sql express okay but it is only for the testing or very small uh, environment okay but if your uh, environment is big or slightly large then always go with the paid version it could be standard okay now let me again scroll down this is again okay recommended and minimum uh, requirement but i always you know uh, i recommend people since you are starting with this okay always give some buffer resources so that if in case you require more resources then you will not struggle later like cpus your ram hard disk all through i'm you know going to cover everything in detail during the installation as well okay so don't worry about that so data security this is the standard requirement now let me just again scroll down microsoft management supported browser so let me just make this tab open into the next page perfect virtualization systems just go through with all these things guys i'm not going to read everything because otherwise our video will become very larger okay but yeah this is just for the your information that what are the you know uh, uh, virtual environmentals are supported by this particular version of the dlp now let me just scroll down a little bit more add a content gateway for web then yeah you can refer this uh, hardware resource requirement this is very much detailed but for us the important thing is this one force point dlp component so for the management server you can see management and supplementary server the operating system requirement is almost same okay and it has to be 64 bit i'll personally recommend this is a 2016 version okay it's also going to expire in next two two three years i guess but you can uh, plan your installation for 2019 or you know the recommended one is 2022 from my end okay all through based on your license av availability you can select your appropriate version okay hardware requirement this is again four cpu this is a uh, you know minimum and the recommended is eight cpu 16 gb ram hard drive four 146 gb hard drives this space 400 gb free space should be minimum 70 gb if you are on uh configuring the rare it's a one plus zero nix two nix card required okay so there is lots of information and the very you know important thing is the server which you are uh, planning okay so you make sure that file names okay the naming conversation should be set to zero otherwise while installing of dlp component you will face some issues and the partitions type you are using it should be ntfs not the fat okay this is very common and uh, the, your servers must have the static ip and your host name should not contain any underscore sign okay otherwise your dlp server will not be able to recognize or you know work properly with that host name your deployment will get failed and one local administrator service account it could be domain account that is fine but it should have the uh, administrator privilege these are the protector environment and guys if in case you are not getting confident with this you know resource requirement then let me explain you one more article so that you will get the better idea okay check this out force point security manager because before uh, we install the dlp component we must install force point security manager right so if you check out here okay uh, then you will get the proper idea so uh, since if you are using 64 bit environment then as per the 10.0 right this is the base version we have you know uh, 2022 20, 20, 20 uh, standard data center you know these are the versions supported so if you are planning for the enterprise then be cautious so we'll have to go with the what force point said standard data center right so hopefully this thing is clear now let me show you what are the supported operating system for the in same way for the dlp server as well for that url is here you go force point dlp so if you are going with the 10.0 right now 10.2 is not updated here it will get updated in some time but however you can check out the operating system right compatible so go with the 2022 2019 2016 standard or data center so in both the operating system for Postman security manager as well as your dlp the operating system requirement is standard or data center so accordingly you can plan your deployment but in 2019 it just accept standard so if you are installing Postman security manager as well as uh, endpoint dlp server then it must be standard right so these are the small small things which you always have to you know uh, 
carefully uh, look while you are planning for the deployment and accordingly you can create your prerequisite okay and get those uh, prerequisite you know fulfilled with the help of your network as well as your uh, vm team or infra team okay guys and let me tell you one more thing the database sql database is required for the first point dlp and not the security manager okay so for first point dlp supported database server is available here data security database so you can run this you know uh, express edition or standard or enterprise edition of sql server based on your requirement okay so accordingly you can choose which database suits you best and it's again it's up to you that whether how exactly you are configuring the database whether it's in a standalone or cluster or shared it's completely up to you okay guys now let me show you the version okay so earlier we have opened this particular link for security manager browser support so when you are installing Forspun, okay, here also the latest version is not updated, but that is fine. So as you could see, if you are in, you know, running your Microsoft Edge, okay, then your that particular version will be best viewable in this particular version. You can check out similar way for the Internet Explorer, Chrome, Mozilla Firefox. Okay, so make sure that you are using compatible browser. Okay, so hopefully the browser requirement is also clear. Now let me open one more new tab and here we'll check for Forcepoint DLP ports. Okay, because we understand right now what are the operating system is required, how much uh, your CPU, RAM, hard disk resources are required as well as the database. Right. Now when we go to the Forcepoint DLP ports, let me just scroll down. You can see the very first thing is required for the human interface device, which means our GUI graphical user interface. So that particular graphical user interface, which means you can say the console is accessible on the port number 9443. So let's say uh, your EPSM installed on the XYZ server, right? And you are accessing that console from the ABC machine. Then from your machine, okay, this port has to be open so that it will be able to initiate the connection with your Postman Security Manager server and open this uh, cons particular uh, console on browser for you. Okay, once that is done, then 443 is the port used by the your DLP agents to communicate with your server. This is a secure port. Now, ports point DLP endpoint server. Okay, so what are the ports are required? So, particularly, these are you can also check out here outbound and inbound. So, ports point security manager and ports point security manager. You can see, so this 443 port is required in bi directional. Similar way, ports point security manager. 17443 this particular port is required for the incident but this is not bi-directional it's just outbound which means outbound means your server where your this particular component is or you can say APSM is installed and this is again the console uh, endpoint clients okay so this is also open from your endpoint okay to your DLP server so if you have any supplementary server then these are the ports required and for endpoint server if you have then yeah we will have to go with the 4431750 Clorer agent okay if you want you can just go through with this this is just for the you know kind of a discovery you can say and when data fingerprinting force point security manager this is very important guide right? again because see as in this particular article force point security manager and this endpoint dlp okay these are the two components are very important okay as well as your console now let me go back again to my management server and you can list down the port which is required as per the direction whether it's outgoing or inbound just go through with all the things and based on what are the components you have you know configured you can enable those ports at the firewall end supplemental ports point dlp server okay that is leave it it's completely up to you guys how many components you are going to integrate with your uh point security manager server accordingly you can enable this uh ports in your environment so if you have you, you if you are going to configure the protector if your environment is larger then yeah these ports are applicable to you otherwise you don't require this at all i kept client this for the web uh, security server so if you want have this enabled depends uh, how is it, which you know configuration your that particular web your server support whether it's icap or on the box yeah you can check that out analytic engines okay so that is fine i guess so based on what i'm going to teach you in this particular uh, video 
or series the major thing is our management server and second one is our dlp server okay and if time permits then i'll also going to cover your clora clora as well as you know email protector web protector other stuff as well so friends i believe now you all guys are clear with uh, resource requirement okay the reason i explain all these things into this particular section how using the web browser is just because guys uh, when i last time you know posted video while showing my excel sheet okay so so many people are commented uh, commenting me on my email as well as my video uh, you know uh, comment section that sir please share this particular video uh, link but the fact is guys guys if i even share that particular sheet with you then the fact is the time you are implementing or watching this video it doesn't uh, have the latest information let's say you are watching this video after 6 months okay so the system requirement might have changed there might be another server of windows is introduced so in this way you know the older information because people i know that you know they directly you know copy this entire sheet and forward it to next person they will not or you can say some of you will not update that sheet with the latest information so that is the reason to avoid all the confusion i you know started explaining all things into the browser itself where we have latest information directly from the force point okay so guys uh, that's it in this video so hopefully you all guys have got a chance to learn something with me if yes then please click on the like button and don't forget to share this video with your friends and colleagues and if in case you already subscribed to this channel then click on the bell icon so that as and when i'll upload new video you will get the notification as soon as i'll upload the video so that's it in this video this is sohan signing out i'll catch you in the new video till then bye bye